can practically see it from here. What? Home. Dunkirk is, of course, Christopher Nolan's new film and everyone's favorite American war drama. Still not letting that go. And as per Christopher Nolan usual, it is filmed partially in IMAX. 75% of the movie is in IMAX, which I think is the highest ratio yet, so just encroaching more and more in IMAX. The IMAX format is really unrivaled in picture quality and immersion, and the aspect ratio uses the entire screen, and I love it. And again, I must of course ask, why do you ever switch back? The movie's 75% IMAX, it is not 100% IMAX. I've heard people say, oh, he uses the black barf thing when he wants you to feel claustrophobic, and I don't buy that shit. Because it switches from 191 to 235, back on the open freaking ocean. It's not just when soldiers are inside of a boat, still though it's nothing like Transformers The Last Night, not even close. It's much better than Christopher Nolan's been in the past with the switching. Dark Knight Rises was pretty bad. And at this point, I'll take what I can get, and I'm happy that it's filmed in IMAX at all. Alright, no one can deny that Dunkirk is a visually gorgeous movie. It uses a kind of muted, steely blue, tan, gray color palette. The cinematography is phenomenal. The effects are gorgeous. You know why the effects are so good? It's because they're not effects. Because Christopher Nolan built World War II Spitfires, stuck IMAX cameras in them and on them, and flew them around. And I would say, just from a visual effects standpoint alone, Dunkirk is an achievement in filmmaking. Dunkirk shows what you can accomplish when you have competent people using a hundred million dollar plus budget. To be honest, I don't know if there's any CGI in this entire movie. In fact, this must have been a set designer's nightmare when they're like, okay, Christopher Nolan, so we're gonna we're gonna have the, the boat capsize over, we'll do that with a crane, then we'll just CGI in the water, and Christopher Nolan's like, no, we're gonna we're gonna flood the compartment with real water, and they're like God help me. I would be fascinated to see a behind the scenes of how this movie was made because it looks incredibly real. And in that regard, is incredibly atmospheric and immersing you in World War II. Not just the visuals, but with the sound design also. When the planes are like coming, like when they pass over, the sound is different when they're behind you as opposed to when they're in front of you. The little machine gun on Tom Hardy's Spitfires are like, and then like the bomber shooting back at him is like, boom, 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 boom. When the bombs are going off, the IMAX theater is just flooded with bass and it's like it's so good dunkirk is probably going to sweep the technical oscars the best scenes in the movie too are when tom hardy's flying around in a real spitfire in crystal clear image quality shooting down bombers those dog fights are some of the best stuff I've seen in a World War II movie. Hans Zimmer's score is not as iconic and melodic as it usually is it's really just a lot of like, score. It's meant to underline and enhance the scene, it's not really meant to take the stage, as he does in the past. There's no boise, there's no Inception boise, there's no interstellar organ. Which, in a way, I'm disappointed by, because I have less tracks to put in my YouTube favorites playlist and just listen to over and over again. But the music's just, like, continuous, and it just builds tension very, very well. And it's just so subtle, and then it slowly builds, and it just, it doesn't let you relax. Something that kind of pissed me off, though, is before the movie came out, they released the track Supermarine on YouTube. But the best part of the track at about 5 minutes 30 seconds just isn't in the movie anywhere. And I know because I listened to it ahead of time and was looking for it the whole movie. And if it was, it was drowned out by other plane sounds and stuff and it was too quiet. So the soundtrack is effective in the movie for sure, but when a Hans Zimmer soundtrack in a Christopher Nolan film is only effective, it's disappointing. Speaking of disappointing, I have quite a few issues with Dunkirk. So when they first announced the movie was going to be PG-13, I kind of freaked out a little. Christopher Nolan's like, don't worry, this is not just some marketing move to include a wider demographic. I'm like, it's clearly a marketing move to include a wider demographic. Which again, really boggles me because R-rated war movies never have trouble at the box office. Most of the violence in Dunkirk is planes getting shot down and people drowning. So like a boat will hit, a bomb will hit a boat and then it'll like fall over and some people will swim and gurgle and they'll drown. Right? It's really not that graphic. It's intense and it's, oh, people are drowning, but it's, it doesn't need to be rated R to show that kind of stuff. Except when they're on the beach. When they're on the beach, I'm like, oh my god, this is going to be so intense. And people are just trapped there on the ground. They don't really have anywhere to go. And there are bombs coming, coming, coming. And then a bomb just hits this group of people. And when the smoke clears, there's just nothing. There's just a little bit of a crater. I'm like, there should be a bloody smushy mess. Where is the bloody smushy mess? And it takes you out of the movie. I'm like, I'm sorry. That's just not what happens in war. People call movies like Hacksaw Rage 
imagine Saving Private Ryan excessive and just glorifying the gore and the violence like, SPOILER ALERT, THAT'S WHAT HAPPENS WHEN A MORTAR SHELL HITS A HUMAN BODY! LET ALONE A BOMB DROP FROM A FREAKING GERMAN BOMBER! By far the biggest issue of this movie is that it is a little bit slower in its pacing, and that is a fancy, socially acceptable way of saying that this movie was fucking boring. The movie gets into a cycle very, very quickly. There's people on the beach, there's a bunch of skinny British white dudes sitting on a beach, Sitting on a beach, they don't talk, they don't do nothing, they just, they sit there, they wait, and then a boat will come to pick them up, some of them will get on the boat, the boat will start going that way, the boat will get bombed by a bomber, the boat will start sinking, some people will make it off, some people will drown, the people who make it off will swim for a little bit, go back to the beach, wait for another boat. That happens like four times. Very quickly, the movie gets into this cycle and starts reusing what it just showed you. Something else that concerned me when I heard Christopher Nolan was doing a true story is that there would be no plot depth, there would be no, like, writing, there'd be no story, it'd be too straightforward and too simplistic. And I would say Dunkirk is way too straightforward and way too simplistic. There is no writing or dialogue or character building at all, and I don't need some shitty backstory about how some guy has a girlfriend waiting for him at home, I just need any interaction between these characters at all. Like, maybe somebody's shell-shocked because a bomb just went off and someone else is grabbing them going, come on, we gotta leave! Like, saying, come on, let's go, as opposed to nothing. And all of these guys look exactly the same to the point I'm like, is that the same guy who was here before? Is that Harry Styles? I honestly, I don't watch One Direction, I don't know. And I would be lying to you if I said I gave a shit about anyone on the beach. The movie's about an hour 45 minutes, which is a full hour shorter than Christopher Nolan usually does. And it it felt like three. I think this movie was a colossal waste of a huge cast. And you hear all these people saying, oh, Harry Styles was a bet that paid off. Oh, Harry Styles, the acting is phenomenal. What f***ing acting? They sit there and do nothing. They run a little, they swim a little. There's no interaction on anybody's faces. There's no character interaction. There's nobody responding to the situation. There's one really stupid scene in a boat later, and that's it. Mark Rylance does a fine job. He's an old guy, could have been played by anybody. Cillian Murphy plays a shell-shocked British soldier who has, like, 20 lines in the whole movie, and he could have been played by anybody. I am telling you, the script for this movie is probably, like, less than 10 pages long. There's this whole side plot about the civilian kid who gets his head hit, and then there's somebody who did it, and he feels bad and guilty about it, and I did not give a shit. To the point where I'm just like, that's one guy, that's some random-ass civilian. There are hundreds of thousands of people stranded on the beach. Why should I care about this one guy? I'd say the most interesting person in the movie was by far Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh plays the colonel, kind of overseeing everything. But even he really only has one scene where he's talking to his other higher-ups, and he's like assessing the situations. Like, Alright, we have 300,000 men, we got 35,000 in French. Be honest, French aren't the priority. We need our army back. We got this many, with this much time till the destroyers come, with this much time till the Germans are closing it, and he's just, you know, like planning stuff out and telling people how it is. And that was a good scene. But it was like one of them in the whole movie. And everybody's like, oh, it's not about the characters, it's not about the people, it's about the event. I'm like, I've seen movies be about the event, be way less boring than Dunkirk was. And nobody would be saying that if this were not based on a true story, if this did not really happen. If this were some randomized, fictionalized war, nobody would give a shit. Okay, so, like, why do I care about the British soldiers? Why am I rooting for them? Alright, the only reason I know and I'm rooting for the British soldiers is because I know that the enemy is a bunch of dickbags. Dunkirk also had a bunch of logical issues that just really made my eyebrows turn up. Now, I don't know how accurate the movie is to the real life events. And I don't know how much of this is dramatized, I don't know if this is based on personal soldiers as a story, different, you know, separate stories and accounts. But there's this scene with a bunch of allied guys in a boat together. And they're like too heavy, the boat like won't float. And they're like all pointing guns at one guy and like, you get out so the rest of us can survive. And there's the like Germans that will shoot him if he comes out of the boat because they have like a line of sight on the boat. And the boat is like riddled with holes and water's pouring in. And everybody's like, plug the holes with your fingers. I'm like, they're still shooting? What? And they're all like, oh, it'll float if we have less weight. And I'm like, the compartment is already flooded with water. And I mean, granted, it floats enough to get them offshore a little bit so that they can then get on another boat. But for anybody to think that this would make a big enough difference, that it was worth killing an innocent allied guy, then you can go f*** yourself. All right, now I don't know the evacuation of Dunkirk all that well. I only know what Christopher Nolan tells me. <laughs> 
I don't know how accurate this movie is. So this is either a criticism of Christopher Nolan's movie, or it's just a criticism of Nazi Germany. But either way, it's a criticism. So... Here you go. So all of the movie's tension comes from the fact that there's so many allied soldiers just trapped in this one place and they can't leave. And it's like shooting fish in a barrel and we're about to get wrecked by German bombers and stuff. Why waste precious tanks when they can pick us off from the air? And they only ever get bombed like twice. All they do is sit there. The danger is being in a boat that then gets bombed. So Britain's being stupid. I mean, they address it in the movie, but it still makes no sense to the fact where Britain... It's like only sending one destroyer at a time because they keep getting bombed. Like, okay, if they're getting bombed, then you want to send them all at once so that if one of them gets bombed, you still have a bunch of others minus one to still carry the troops across, right? And it really took me out of it once I realized that there's like three bombers in the whole freaking movie and Tom Hardy shoots down most of them. All right, so if I am Nazi Germany and I am aware of the fact that all of Britain's ground forces are trapped in one freaking location. I am not sending three bombers. I am sending my entire air force, and I am winning the war right there. Again, that's either a lapse in Hitler's judgment, or that's Christopher Nolan not accurately representing how many planes were in the air. Guys, this is Christopher Nolan. He was, up until Thursday, my favorite director. Nobody was more anxious to ride this guy's dick than me. Ha! <laughs> But Dunkirk is such a shallow, short, simplistic movie, and it's about the event, it's not about the people, it's like, okay, so then you can't fairly compare it to a movie that is emotionally rich and about the people and about the event, and has all this plot depth and story depth that just makes it objectively a better movie, because there's more good in it then, right? Dunkirk is just about the event and doesn't do much else, then how is it a masterpiece? That can't be our standard of legendary film quality. Dunkirk is not a bad movie. Dunkirk is a decent movie. Dunkirk is an extraordinarily well-made movie. Tom Hardy is a freaking badass, and whenever Tom Hardy is on screen, the movie's fantastic, but I cannot get attached to and therefore emotionally damaged when they then die to a bunch of lifeless wooden extras. Especially when the situation the film presents was not nearly as intense or dangerous as the trailers made it out to be. And I'm sorry, but true story plus visual effects demo does not equal great movie. As far as World War II movies go, Schindler's List is much better. Saving Private Ryan is much better. Hacksaw Ridge is much better. As far as real-life evacuation stories go, Sully is much better. Sully doesn't have a shot fired in the entire movie, and Sully was a hundred times more exciting than Dunkirk. Dunkirk has great effects. Dunkirk has extraordinary production and film set design. It shows what you can do with a budget, but that's all it is, and Christopher Nolan has done a lot better. And I guarantee you, if the movie was the exact same, but directed by Michael Bay or Zack Snyder, nobody would give a flying shit. If I had to give Dunkirk a number, it'd be a 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10? Wow, like, what a shitty way to end the summer, like, seriously. Disappointment after disappointment after disappointment, and then boom, Christopher Nolan makes a very mediocre movie. How about that, huh? You think I'm happy about that?